and many people uh, will betray each other. So we need to learn to have strength from God even when we are alone. That uh, when we see Christians betraying one another and even pastors who betray others, we do not, we will not be affected by them. Then we say, God will protect us. We have faith in God. God will, uh, has, God will give us strength. And then Christians need to care for each other and build up each other emotionally and spiritually. So we need to learn to do this now that we pray for people and help people and counsel people to help people to trust in God and not to look at people's faults, not to be affected by people. When people yell at us, it's their sin. They are under the power of sin and under the power of Satan. We don't have to be affected by them when they yell at us. We don't have to take them the words seriously. We don't have to eat the garbage. So we learn to do this. We learn to do this. I have teachings about this too, that to how not to be affected by people, how not to be affected by our emotions, that we trust in God, that you have almighty power, that you, you have all the blessings for us. And so we trust in you, we follow you, we don't have to worry about anything, and we take care of our emotions so that we always have faith in God and trust in God's goodness. And Christians have to put down the expectation of this world. Uh, and in Revelation 17, 12, it says that 10 kings will suddenly receive authority to become kings. Now that means there will be uh, coups all over the world. Suddenly, 10 kings will suddenly receive authority to, authority to become kings. They were not kings before. And suddenly, they receive authority to become kings. So suddenly the kings were overthrown and there were new kings. So we know that the world would change. Actually now we see that there is war happening in the world and there is uh, potential of wars in different places. And when we see this, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Uh, trust that God has everything in control and don't, don't trust in the world. Don't trust in the kingdom of the world. Don't trust in the kings. Trust in God alone. Now when we have the kingdom and in a world that we still can worship God, we thank God for that. But at that time when uh, Antichrist takes over the nation, then we don't obey the order to give up Jesus. Then we don't obey the order to worship uh, the beast. So at that time, then we know that, you know, when uh, the Antichrist is in power, we don't obey the Antichrist. That means there is radical political, polit political changes over the whole world. Christians need to learn to pay attention to and obey the guidance of the Holy Spirit. For guidance, for help, for strength, for provision. That the Holy Spirit, we need to get used to listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. To wait for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. To have a quiet mind a quiet spirit so that we can hear from God. Luke 12:12. 12, 12, For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that hour what you ought to say. So at that time the Holy Spirit will teach us what to say so we don't have to worry. And also there are churches that don't that are not open to the work of the Holy Spirit. So for those who are op who are open to the work of the Holy Spirit, we need to learn to train other Christians. We need to learn to train other Christians so that they are open to the work of the Holy Spirit also, that they will learn to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And then never to receive the seal of the beast or to worship the beast. Revelation 13, 17, even if one has to die, people who receive the seal of the beast will not be saved. In Revelation 14, 9 to 10, those who receive the seal of the beast will not be saved. Now, at this time, there are people who put microchips into people. Uh, they can put it into the hand. Uh, they can put it in different parts of the body. And at this point, they are not the seal of the beast yet because it doesn't involve worshiping the beast. Now, why do some people uh, put in the microchips now? Because it's for convenience that they can uh, buy things or they can have transaction of money, they receive the salary, also the passport, 
all put into the microchip. Actually, this will prepare the way for the beast to control people. That in the future, many people will have them, them, uh, their passports and then all the money, the bank accounts, all into the microchip in the hand. And then the beast will force everyone to also receive this. Now there has been many, many people who already have received this, uh, this um, microchip into their hand uh, for convenience. And some people is for medical reasons. Some people have serious sickness and the microchip will record the sickness and what medicine need to be taken, uh, the medical, uh, their health condition. Uh, but for many people, it's just for convenience. So Christians should not have this. And then uh, at the time when we are forced to receive this and then to worship the beast, we must say no. Now, it seems that then we will die, but we trust in God. So we spend time, all the time praying, because at that time, uh, we, our money wouldn't be useless. We cannot buy any food anywhere. Uh, maybe in Africa, is you have the advantage in some places that you can still have crops. Like in Hong Kong, we don't have, you know, we don't grow our own crops. We can have crops anymore. In Africa, you can still grow crops and then eat the food, uh, the crops. But then uh, there's one point that you cannot eat the crops anymore because they will uh, take all the food from you. So the, ultimately, we need to depend on God alone. Since even the beast receive its authority from God, we learn to trust in God's provision and protection. So God has everything in His hand. John 14, 12 Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this he will do. Because I go to my Father. Jesus could feed the 5,000. Moses did not have to eat or drink for 40 days and nights. And then the angel led Peter to walk out of prison. The people wanted to push Jesus down a cliff, but Jesus walked through them. We can do similar things when God protects us. So we need to build up a strong relationship with God and have courage to do witnessing and be ready to die for Christ. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcome him, the beast, uh, the dragon, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So the way we overcome uh, the devil is by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony. So even in the time of the Great Tribulation, we do witnessing. We witness to people and then uh, that we learn to not to love our lives to the death, even when we have to die then we say we still do witnessing for Jesus and God is pleased with us and God can protect us. God can protect us for as long as He wants to so that we can witness to more people. And then for pastors have the responsibility to train Christians to be victorious in a great tribulation. Pastors have to study the Bible to be sure about the time of rap the rapture. Now I hope you already understand the time of rapture from my teaching today. Uh, if you are not sure, you can study it yourself. The, the few passages that are shown. Many pastors hold on to the belief of pre- and mid-tribulation rapture without direct proofs from the Bible, and they mislead many Christians not to be ready for the tribulation. So it's sad to see that many, Christ many pastors, they don't find the truth from the Bible. They just follow some teachings. And also some some people, they just follow teachings of other pastors without biblical proof. So with every teaching we have, we should find biblical proofs before we teach it. We need to train past, uh, Christians to be able to shepherd themselves and shepherd others. In the Great Tribulations, the Christian might not be able to find anyone to shepherd them. So the, it's hard to for the Christians to gather together. So the Christians have to shepherd those Christians around them and to uh, witness to the people around them. And we need to train Christians to have a kingdom view of the world. That means we don't just take care of our own church. We take care of everyone, every Christian. 
God has full authority in the Great Tribulations. Christians have a role to influence the world in the Great Tribulation. Christians need to not just think about themselves, but to think for God's kingdom and to understand the roles in glorifying God in the most difficult times, <coughs> most difficult situation. So we need to learn to understand that. It's mo most important that we protect the church and protect all Christians, not just the Christians in our church, to have a kingdom view of the world. Four, we need to wake up other pastors and Christians to be ready for the Great Tribulation. So we need to tell them that there are many proofs from the Bible that we have to go through the Tribulation. Christians need to be ready. We need to learn that to trust in God for the provision for our ministry now and in the Great Tribulation. Nobody will have any income during the Great Tribulation. So we won't have any income. So we need to depend on God only. Okay, so um, now so uh, this is all I have about the tribulation now. If you have any question, you can ask me. And I will want to conclude uh, to just to talk about the Holy Spirit. <coughs> it's very important that we... Uh, how can we be, we be filled with the Holy Spirit? It's very important that we have a close relationship with God. And we trust in God's goodness. And we trust that God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And in order to experience and keep the infilling of the Holy Spirit, that there are a few things we need to do. First is to repent of all sins and turn away from all sins. And then base our faith on the Word of God. To trust in the Word of God, to be familiar with the Word of God, so that we, we have faith because of the Word of God. And then... Um, build up the relationship with God and spend more time praying and loving God and pay attention to the voice of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> and then when we have the Holy Spirit it's for praying for people for laying hands on people so that they will experience the Holy Spirit so that we can pray for people to experience the Holy Spirit and lead them to believe in Jesus so this is how we do it I have a method of evangelism called experience God evangelism that I would talk to people about God is real and God can bless you right now. Would you like me to lay hand on you? And then they, when they say yes and I lay hand on them, I tell them to open the heart to God and love God and desire God. And then I lay hand on them and then we worship God together. Thank you, Father. We love you. We worship you. We adore you. God, you're so good. We love you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then I lay hand on them, and then afterwards I ask them, have you experienced anything during the prayer? Some people will experience peace, joy, power, strength, uh, comfort, uh, motivation, uh, transformation of life. And then I tell them this is from God, so you want to keep this. And then uh, when you experience this, it shows that God is real. Do you want Jesus to continue to bless your whole life? And also God can bring healing. Do you want God to bless your whole life? And then if they're willing, I'll, I'll lead them to Jesus. So I lay hand on non-Christians to experience the Holy Spirit. And after I lay hand on them, it's very important to ask them, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And then they say yes. Then I tell them that you experience uh, the Holy Spirit. Do you want God to continue to bless you? And then if they want God to bless them. Then I tell them about the gospel. Jesus died for you. Are you willing to repent of all your sins and trust in Jesus as a Savior? And Jesus can give you eternal life. And then I'll lead them in the sinner's prayer to confess the sins and trust in Jesus as the Savior. And then for Christians, I help them to experience the Holy Spirit to let them know that they can have a close relationship with God. And then they can have the power to lay hands on people to lead people to Christ. And they have the power to lay hands on people to help them experience the Holy Spirit and grow in spiritual life and have spiritual power to bring healing and comfort to people and to uh, bring physical and inner healing to people and to transform people's Christian life. So I train Christians to have the power of the Holy Spirit to, uh, so that they can lay hands on people or lead them in praise and worship to worship God and then they can experience God more and more. Okay, so 
when we open our heart to God and love God all the time, spend more time loving God when we are cooking, walking, doing other things, when we're doing other things, we can at the same time we praise God, worship God. God, you're so wonderful. We love you. We like you. You're a wonderful God. You're a loving God. You're a kind God. You're a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I worship you. I adore you all the time. And the more they do that, the more ex they will experience the Holy Spirit and the more they will have power. And then the more they can serve God and lay hands on people and help them to experience the Holy Spirit, to believe in Jesus or for the spiritual life to be raised up and then they can be used by God. So I hope that you will practice doing that. You can practice doing that after I pray for you. Uh, that the pastors can lay hand on the other people and then help them to experience the Holy Spirit. So at this point, please stand up. Please stand up. And I'll pray for you. You open your heart to God. And then you can experience His presence, His peace and comfort. When you experience His peace and comfort to you, and some of you might experience the swaying of the body. The body sway forward and backward. And uh, now what is the biblical support of that? That in the Bible, uh, it talks about that John, that when he saw Jesus uh, in Revelation 1.17, he fell to the ground. And also in the uh, book of Acts chapter 9, when Saul, Saul saw Jesus, he also fell to the ground. So in the presence of God, people can fall down. Now, when the power is not as powerful, then people can sway. So, when I pray for you, maybe your body will sway, move forward and backward by itself. Then you open your heart, that is from God, and then you open your heart and you can experience His power more and more. Okay? So, let's... Uh, at this point, please uh, stand up, open your heart to God, and worship God together and trust that God desires to fill us with the Holy Spirit trust that God delights in us He wants us to come to Him okay so please stand up Heavenly Father we praise You and thank You we worship You we adore You You are so wonderful You are good God thank You Lord Jesus we adore You ah, Hallelujah now you can cry out from your heart like me Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love Jesus. I worship Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love so that we have strong love for people. Lord Jesus, transform our life. Give us a new spiritual life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. You're so wonderful. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you, O oh Lord, hallelujah, so just cry out. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, you're so good. Hallelujah, God, you're so good. You're wonderful. God, you're wonderful. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Th thank you, Jesus. You're wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. God, you're so good. You, God, you're so good. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Give us the spiritual gifts. Give us strength from you. Give us power from you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay? Now you can continue to pray and then you can share also. You can send to me what you experienced during the prayer 
and also the pastors can pray for the people or any spirit-filled leaders can pray for the people and then ask them what they've experienced and then you can send to me and please take the pictures too take the pictures uh, I haven't seen the pictures today so take the pictures of the people and then um, send to me and God bless you and so spend more time loving God and then the more you practice loving God the more you experience his presence okay God bless you if you have any question you can send to me right now do you have any question right now okay if you don't then we stop here now God bless you God be with you and please keep this strong anointing of God keep the strong presence of God love God all the time the key to being filled with the Holy Spirit is love God all the time obey God all the time desire God and believe that God wants to bless us believe that God is here God wants to bless us God is happy God is happy that we come to him God is happy that we come close to him and worship him God is very very happy so we can be happy because of that and then the more happy we are the more joy we can have hallelujah